you've already got hundreds of other things to worry about when you're on set, especially when it comes to the three most important things, focus, exposure, and color. So here are 10 essential tips to getting consistent color when shooting with your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. Color grading is increasingly becoming one of the most important post-production processes of any type of film production, no matter how big or small it is. And so it's really essential that you get it as accurate and essentially consistent as possible whenever you're shooting out there to make the whole post-production process a whole lot easier for yourself or whoever is in that process for you. You should begin by assigning one of your three function buttons to display a lot of your choice. This is really important as it essentially enables you to quickly toggle on and off a LUT that you might be using in the post-production process right on the camera. This enables you to accurately see on your screen what the final product will look like just before you do all of your color correction and the balancing and everything too. So this is a great way to start. This is especially important if you have a client on set and they want to be able to monitor the footage. You don't really want to showcase all that flat, yucky, grey profile that you get out of Blackmagic RAW or straight ProRes out of the camera and you really want to be able to make sure that you are showcasing what the image is most likely to look like when you're putting it into DaVinci Resolve or whatever your other post-production process is straight off the gate. Speaking of LUTs, use the Film to Gen 5 video LUT developed by Blackmagic that is already on your Pocket 6K Pro camera and any other Blackmagic camera that you might be using. This is really important as I find this so much more accurate when it comes to color grading in the post-production process compared to using a generic standard Rec. 709 conversion LUT that a lot of people might sell on the internet. Now some of them are really good but you do need to be careful when using these because some LUTs that are developed by other people and not Blackmagic themselves haven't really been stress tested properly. This means that things like the shadows and highlights might be completely out of whack and when you are actually filming and you're using a non-black magic LUT onto the actual camera itself, you may be getting a completely different image compared to when you actually bring it into DaVinci Resolve. This doesn't happen all the time. Obviously, if you have a really good LUT that you like and you compare to, that's great. But personally, I love using the Gen 5 film LUT that is baked into the, onto the black magic cameras. Use Blackmagic Gen 5 Color when you are using the Blackmagic cameras. It's been around for a few years now. I think it is a much more natural and almost quite close to what the RE cameras look like when it comes to the color reproduction that comes straight out of the camera. And I think it is leaps and bounds better compared to Gen 4 film when you are comparing it and the uh, whole color science that's attributed towards that. Now, arguably, it is a little bit harder to grade when you're first starting out using Gen 5 color compared to the Gen 4 color science, but I think the reward is so much more worth it. And with a bit of practice, you can easily get there and learn how to properly manipulate any type of Gen 5 color science footage that comes from your pocket cinema cameras. Next up, turn off auto sharpening. You don't want this baked into your footage. There are ways you can get the detail back in post, but you still need to have the flexibility to change it in post later and if you do add on auto sharpening inside the camera and bake it into the footage it's going to create a whole lot of mess and really remove the amount of latitude that you have when you want to edit the footage later on so get rid of post sharpening don't turn it on and if you want to bring it back you can easily do so in DaVinci Resolve later on Tip number four is calibrate your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera screen. This is really important as this is the main display unless you're using an external display to monitor your footage whenever you're filming. I highly recommend getting a color calibrator tool just like you would on a computer display and using that to calibrate the exact colors into the actual camera itself. But Blackmagic cameras have been known to be a little bit of a tinty shift when it comes out of the box, especially with the 6K Pro, that tint kind of goes toward the blue area. So Blackmagic have a built-in tool that enable you to essentially eyeball the screen and adjust the color temperature and tint when it comes to going onto the back of the screen of the camera. I highly recommend doing this in a dark room, set a light to 5600K, so that's like the standard daylight, and using your eyeballs to kind of balance it out and always do this whenever you are unboxing the new camera or if you haven't done so already. So tip number five on the camera is use the auto white balance setting on the camera whilst using a gray card as well. This is a wonderful tool right inside the main screen on the Blackmagic cameras. Essentially, you just point the camera at a white card or even a piece of paper, but if you are gonna use a piece of paper, please make sure it is as bright white as possible and very opaque. You don't want any light shining through. Point it at either of those, and essentially the Blackmagic camera, whenever you're on set, will determine what it thinks is the best white balance setting rather than you just adjusting with your eyes. So those are five tips on the camera. Let's jump over to DaVinci Resolve and explore some other tips that you can use to essentially get accurate color all the time when you're bringing your footage from your pocket cinema camera into DaVinci Resolve. Firstly, color management is one of your best friends and the most important setting. I personally like to use the workflow that involves DaVinci's HDR intermediate wide color gamut process inside of DaVinci Resolve. 
This doesn't necessarily mean that you're preparing your project for HDR, but it will automatically take your Blackmagic RAW footage and convert it into Rec.709 perfectly how you saw it on the camera. This way you'll never need to set up a node each time you want to take your flat RAW or log footage and get it to a more usable state. Instead, you can go straight into correcting and balancing your footage. Blackmagic themselves have an excellent 30 minute free tutorial on how this whole color management process works. And there are a lot of different other ways that you can manage your color inside of a project. And I am by no means a pro colorist at all. Personally, I found this is the quickest way to get all of your footage matching exactly the same, however you've shot it out of the camera straight away. And the next tip in DaVinci Resolve, if you prefer to individually manage each clip, Use Color Space Transform to convert each individual clip into Rec.709 or whatever your preferred output is. Either this tip or the first one is all you should be using. There's no need to individually balance color anymore using the primary wheels inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's just a inconsistent and long process. You really should either be using the Color Space Transform inside each of the nodes on the clips and this is really great when you've got lots of different cameras on there or you should be using the DaVinci HDR Intermediate Wide Color Gamut approach. Tip number three in DaVinci Resolve, once you've done either of these, my first step when it comes to balancing is to go to your printer lights, use the RGB color picker and hover over a monochromatic area within your frame, preferably any grays or blacks. Change the printer lights according based onto these figures that come up. For example, if blue is too dominant, you have to bring down the blue. If green is too hot, you have to bring down the green. And if red is too little, you can bring up the red. And you can use these printer lights to really essentially get to your image as clean as possible out of the camera and as balanced as possible before you start applying looks and everything because you really don't want to start applying looks when your footage is not balanced and you can do this across all of your footage and essentially do passes through making sure everything is clean and consistent as possible. So tip number four are for those Mac users out there like myself. Mac OS tends to shift your footage on export meaning no matter what you do when you export your footage from your DaVinci Resolve timeline it looks just a tad different and a little bit more flatter in Mac OS. Now, this is not your fault and it really only occurs when you're viewing the footage or anything on a Mac computer. It occurs when macOS processes the color through its own GPU and there's no clean feed input slash output. Now, you can go out and buy yourself an I.O. box, but they're expensive. Some don't work with the new M1 chips and it gets a bit complicated. Again, I'll link a more in-depth video on the topic. Also, make sure you set your display to the same color profile as you're using with your projects. For example, I use LG 32UL950 monitors and I essentially set inside the monitor settings to go into Rec.709 and Gamma 2.2 rather than DCI-P3 or something else to make sure I'm viewing the same color space that's inside the project too to get the most consistent color when editing my 6K Pro footage in DaVinci Resolve. And last tip that links back to turning off auto sharpening on your Blackmagic cameras themselves, you can use these two tools to bring back some sharpness. Firstly, mid-tone details adds contrast to the detailed elements of your footage, which can be found on the main wheels page. You do this in DaVinci Resolve rather than in the camera to ensure that you have the most latitude to play with when adjusting sharpening in post. This is great when using it in combination with the sharpening feature inside of DaVinci Resolve, which can be found in this panel just here. And these two work great, especially when you're trying to denoise your footage inside the motion effects tab, which essentially softens the image. So using the sharpening feature here is great instead of using it inside the camera and whenever you are trying to reduce noise. And that's it. Those are five tips on the camera as well as five tips in DaVinci Resolve resolve that will help you getting consistent color out of your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. Have a great day, stay safe, and of course, do take care.